Hello there, YouTube. Welcome to another episode of the Thoughts of No One in Particular. There has been quite a delay due to my lack of camera time, and I have a lot of subjects backed up. However, I thought I'd just drop my uh, two cents in with regard to the reignited um, race debate here on YouTube. Because it's silly. And that's, that, that's the thing. Um, in America, you tend to take um, these idiots very seriously. Even the opponents of these idiots. Um, the race tards, as they've been referred to. Um, however, here in Britain, we just tend to laugh at them. Well, let me ask you a question. Where did Jesus come from? England! Yes, my dear, England! <laughs> yes, he did! Look, let me ask, look, what was the first two English names in the Bible? Mary and Joseph, wasn't it? Joseph is a Jewish name. Well, all right, Jesus might have been a bit Jewish on his father's side. <laughs> like you. I mean, blimey, Mary! You couldn't get a more English name than Mary. Anyway, Joseph wasn't Jesus' father, was he? Joseph, I mean, all he was, he was like, sort of... Well, he was like a lodger, wasn't he? <laughs> no, God was Jesus' father, and God ain't Jewish, is he? Don't even look Jewish. <laughs> it's the last thing he would have made himself, and God is Church of England. I hmm? oh, makes it a Queen's Church, see? And what he done... He sent Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem to have his son and thereby to start the Christian faith. Why do you think that God with all his pull? I mean, he'd have found him a better place to stay than a stable. Well, there wasn't no room at the inn that night. Oh, it was Christmas. Everywhere's crowded at Christmas. <laughs> Hello, silly mo. How could it have been Christmas? He hadn't been bloody well born yet. Oh, what? Elf, why, why Bethlehem? Why not London? Bethlehem is in the Middle East, isn't it? So? Oil. <laughs> Alf Garnet there, trying to explain how Jesus was in fact English. Yeah. The problem with the world today is there are a lot of little Alf Garnets out there. Not necessarily outright racists, or race realists, as they like to call themselves on YouTube, but also the I'm not racist buts. Uh, to quote Marcus Brigstock, if you start a sentence with I'm not racist but, you are about to say something incredibly racist. Which is true. Um, Why else would you say it? Um, but, uh, yeah... And the funny thing is, when you look at these hardcore racists, and they will go on about the concept of a white race. Or, or they will list a number of races. They will say there's white people, there's black people, East Asian, Indian, subcontinent Asian, and um, the Australian Aborigines and couple of others maybe but old oh, Filipino as well but they, they, they the thing is if you've um, if you take a look at um, these features they claim a constant defining of a particular race they just don't work out at all I mean there was a um, drama recently on British television called Body Farm. Uh, I couldn't find this clip, but uh, I shall um, relate the scene to you nonetheless. Um, it's, a patho it's a pathology show based around a pathologist who runs a experimental uh, facility called Body Farm that studies decomposition. And she's also called out to criminal cases. She's called out to this case, and they are literally scraping the body off the wall. And there's no real identifying marks, and um, the officer in charge of the investigation turns around and says, uh, OK, can you give me, give me a race at least? And I said, mixed. 
mix mix of what? I said, oh, Angle, Saxon, Jute, Kelt, the usual. Yeah, typical English mongrel. That's the thing. When you're talking about um, a, a kind of a unified white race, it just doesn't exist. Um, it, as a concept, it didn't even exist until... Um, yeah, until until sort of the foundation of America around the 18th century, until oh, until we started um, shipping Africans over in the slave trade, we didn't really have this concept of a white man um, compared to say, okay, it's it's really silly, and what we have just just within this tiny little island I live on, um, the UK. We have so many different groups that are really separate races, if you're going to call them races. We have your Anglo-Saxon group, uh, with a bit of jute and some subdued Celt mixed in, and that's most of the sort of south, south to middle England. Then up north, you've got a lot of Scandinavian DNA going around. Um, because and if you notice the Yorkshire accent um, and all the various different northern accents are very similar and some of their dialectic words are very similar to Scandinavian words and Scandinavian pronunciation. There's a reason for that and that is they, they're, they're pretty much solid Viking. And we go further forward, there's a further up north and we run into the descendants of the Scots or the Scottish and the Scottish are in fact Irish and the Irish are in fact Scottish which is a very confusing thing but um, <laughs> but when it comes to the Scots of course I believe one of their comedians um, put it the best We're an unfashionable race, the Scots You see, now you here in England, you're white, we're pale blue Now clearly Connolly is exaggerating for the sake of a cheap laugh, but he makes a good point. The good point being that there are visible differences and there is visible diversity in the native populations of all the various different parts of Britain. Hell, even if you just leave e England in it, you've got the difference between the Scandinavian um, descended north and the Anglo-Saxon descended south, so you've got a real mix in there. And with people moving around into reading it, it's we're a mess. We're a bunch of mongrels, um, and you can't um, you can't actually say that there is this idea of a homogenous white race because it just doesn't exist. Um, what's even funnier is when we start moving across into Europe and the various white supremacist parties of Europe, and we look at Greece, who had the Golden Dawn, who had somewhat of a um, disturbingly successful election last time and they are classical white supremacists and they appear on white supremacist sites etc etc despite the fact if you speak to most Greek people and I live in an area with a lot of Greek people they will go oh we're not white we're olive yes apparently that's now a a distinction um, but anyway, the, the point is their skin's a lot darker than say somebody from further up up to the north of Europe and they are very sort of distinct in their appearance so much so that um, the British National Party announced their first non-native English candidate and this was supposed to be a really big thing because of course they um, they were forbidden by our discrimination laws from only accepting white native, sorry, native English people into their party. So it's the big thing that they finally, and it was a Greek guy. And unfortunately, this Greek guy decided what he um, decided to adopt a sort of a, a hairstyle and appearance that made him look, because, and he had a somewhat darker skin than most Greek people. Um, so he looked very Asian, um, without actually being Asian. Of course, this caused the BNP forums to go crazy. 
and they were um, saying things like, I don't care if his ancestors built the Taj Mahal, he ain't fucking British. Which is just stupid, because he was Greek. Um, <laughs> and also, when you look at some particularly elderly people, and when they tan, they can look certainly not white, certainly more, more tan than, say, uh, thing. my grandma was a was a um, something of a uh, ridiculously over-the-top racist, and she, when she got her tan from uh, hanging around the Arctic Circle, that's another story, um, but when she got her tan, she looked somewhat darker than the people she was slagging off. Um, <laughs> so that's the thing. You can't really suggest that there is a kind of homogen any kind of homogeneity between white people any kind of and when you you're talking about race in general identification of it as Hannibal as point as is very difficult actually working out where one race begins and one race ends and when you're looking at bodies of, of where the flesh has gone away or you're scraping bits off the wall like in the body farm um it's almost impossible to tell the difference. And although you can, I believe, through a process that um, basically dissects the bone, tell where somebody spent most of their living life. And the University of Dundee uh, Criminology Department recently did a... Um, case where they decided to look at the 13th century body because they do this every year they for for like um basically about three months every year they help out the archaeology department by taking up some of their their cases and call them history cold cases and they've got a tv show about it and the university of dundee looked into um this body which was an african man who'd been buried in Northampton, I believe, a monastery nearby, and yeah, they found they found all sorts of um, all sorts of interesting things in his bone structure that he'd spent a lot of time, or he'd been he'd grown up in Ethiopia. Um, they also found that he moved to England with various different missions this is the documentary look at evidence he went through went through within the christian uh, church who were moving people around quite a bit considering the difficulties in traveling and he was a um he, he was a priest for a while then he left the church and became a groundskeeper for the monks and married an english girl so yes we have mixed race kids from the uh, 13th century awesome um that's the thing um i'm not sure if hannibal's pointed this out before but the idea of racism is so young compared to the, we don't really um have it showing up until we start trying to justify our slave trade and yes i will admit as a historian i have to admit that there was an existing slave trade in Africa, and what what Whitey actually did was 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 industrialise it. But that does not get rid of our blame, because a civilised people would have stamped it out. They would have ended slavery, not industrialised it to ridiculous for profit. And that there is. Um, the uh, reason why people keep bringing up the slave trade is because of the fact, yes, it's fair enough, you can say that the Africans had their slaves. Fact. But rather than stop them keeping people as slaves, we decided to take up the same idea and industrialise it to the point where thousands were dying in crossings. Just That's just crossing the bloody ocean, let alone actually um once they got to the various plantations in the colonies so yeah 
just don't go there with that argument, really. Um, anyhow, when when we talk about um, racism, just bear in mind there is no definition of a white race recognised. Um, I mean, even the word of the, the word, current technical term Caucasian, which makes very little sense because of the fact, as I said, you've got very distinct variations between even such a small area as England. So you can't really sort of lump us all together in these big blocks because it just doesn't work. Um, and then you have the Hispanic who, group in America that you, you, you're constantly ra railing against too. And the thing is, the Hispanic group are a combination of um, white people from Spain and the local native Central American population. So, again, not a distinct race. In fact, I don't know, because we can't define this line, we cannot put these people into these boxes. It's just not working. I think it's perfectly fair to discount the idea entirely.